Welcome to our service of worship, even though we're meeting together online. It's so exciting to be worshiping you with this morning. A special welcome to anyone who is joining us for the first time. I hope that you all had a, a good Christmas and New Year celebrations. We normally go down to Cape Town to be with family this time of the year. But unfortunately, we were not able to go down this year, which is sad because I wanted to meet my brother's daughter, my niece, who was born in November, Sophia. 2020 was a tough year for many, and 2021 will continue to be tough. We've seen President Ramaphosa clamp down on alcohol and big gatherings of people, and so we are not meeting in person. But we are meeting together to praise the Lord behind our mobile phones and our electronic devices. We are gathered in Jesus' name. We are united in our love for Jesus. We are one body with Jesus as the head. Let us pray. Father, we shout our praises and adore you. And we do so despite our circumstances. We worship and adore you because you are a great, powerful God who is worthy to be praised. You are a God who loves us more than we will ever know. Father, you are, we, we are amazed that you are everywhere. There is nowhere we can go to escape your presence, as Jonah discovered. Father, you are a faithful God. Since the days of Adam, Abraham, Moses, King David, and all the prophets, you have been faithful. And you are unchanging. You continue to be faithful to us. Thank you that we get to kneel before your throne with confidence because of Jesus. But Father, we are not faithful. We disappoint you. We rebel against you. We doubt your promises. We want to take control of our own lives and we struggle to surrender to you. We hurt other people. We are self-centered. Father, we are a mess and the world is a mess. But you sent Jesus. You came to establish a kingdom, a movement that will change the world. And we are part of that kingdom. In your kingdom, things are different. The poor have clothes. The hungry are fed. In your kingdom, family, we care for each other. We are different from the world. We have different values. Father, you've called us to love you and love our neighbor. You have called us to love our fellow followers of Jesus the way that you loved us. This is a daunting challenge. Forgive us, Lord, when we fall short. Thank you for your mercy and grace. Amen. During the time of Jesus, the, the Jews used to call the Gentiles pigs, and evidently because the Gentiles kept a lot of pigs, and the Jews were not allowed to eat pork, according to the Mosaic law. And so in the story of the prodigal son, we see he's working for a Gentile, he's feeding pigs, and it would have been the greatest scandal and humiliation because the Jews saw pigs as unclean. The Jews kept themselves apart from Gentiles. They called the Gentiles pigs. So let's go back to the beginning. After the fall in Genesis, God says to the serpent, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers, he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Now this is known as the Adamic covenant, a promise that God has a plan to set things right after the disobedience and rebellion of Adam and Eve. And so as we look back at this prophecy, we realize that God is talking about Jesus, the male offspring of a woman, will crush the serpent's head, and that is why Je what Jesus does on the cross. He crushes the serpent's head, and the serpent will strike his heel, which symbolizes his death on a cross, but it's only a bruising of his heel because of the res resurrection of Jesus. In Genesis, we read what is known as the Abrahamic covenant. I will make you into a great nation. And I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. It's a promise that God makes to Abraham, and it's a follow on from the Davidic covenant. It's a follow on from the, the Adamic covenant, but with more details. God sets aside a family that becomes a nation. And his promise is that all peoples on earth will be blessed through Abraham and his descendants. And this happens because Jesus is born, a descendant of Abraham, and through Jesus all nations of the, and, and peoples of the earth will be blessed. The blessing is for everyone, not just the Jews, but even for the Gentiles. So this Sunday, as I said previously, is Epiphany Sunday. It's important because it's the day that the Gentiles from the East meet Jesus Christ, the King whose star they have seen and followed. 
And so in this moment, the prophecy is starting to be filled. Jesus did not just come to save the Jews. He came to save and bless all the peoples of the earth. And so not only do Jewish shepherds get to see Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, but Magi, Gentiles from the East, get to give gifts to this king who was born in Bethlehem. In Isaiah chapter 60, we read, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord raises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. And further on in verse 5, we read, The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land. Young camels of Midian and Epa, all from Sheba will come, bearing golden incense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. Now remember, Isaiah is writing about a coming king who will be greater than King David and King Solomon. This prophecy gives hope to the people of Judah in captivity in Babylon. Even though the temple is in ruins and the walls of Jerusalem have been destroyed one day, one day, Israel will once again have a great king like King David and King Solomon. And of course, Isaiah is prophesying, prophesying about a king called Jesus. And he prophesies that from Sheba will come people bearing golden incense and praising the Lord. In Psalm chapter 72, we read these words in verse 10 and 11. May the kings of Tarshish and, and of distant shores bring tribute to him. May the kings of Sheba and Seba present him gifts. May all kings bow down to him, and all nations serve him. And in verse 15 we read, Long may he live. May gold from Sheba be given him. May people ever pray for him and bless him all day long. And in verse 17, may his name endure forever. May it continue as long as the sun. Then all nations will be blessed through him, and they will call him blessed. Praise be to the Lord God, the God of Israel, who is alone does marvelous deeds. Praise be to his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. This is a psalm written by David. And it looks forward to King Solomon, whose wisdom and wealth means that kings from other nations come to pray tribute to him. But little did David know that he was prophesying about Magi from the east, who would bring gifts to Jesus Christ. King Jesus, the Savior of Israel in the entire world, a king greater than Solomon. In Matthew chapter 2, we read, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. The Magi are thought to be from parts of Iran, and in fact the word Magi is closely associated with the word magic. You see, these magi were practitioners of astrology and were also thought to practice alchemy and magic. The word magi also refers to kings or wise men. Firstly, they weren't just Gentiles. They practiced magic and were fortune tellers. Secondly, we see that they saw the star two to three years before. And so Jesus was three years old when they found him and Mary in a house, not a stable. And Joseph is not around when they arrive and visit Jesus, the young boy, and we know he was three because Herod orders all children, three and younger, to be killed based on the Magi's information about when the star appeared. As we continue to read in Matthew chapter 2 in verse 9, we read, They went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed on coming to the house they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Thirdly, in this moment, all the prophets that we read in prophecies that we read in Genesis, Psalms, and Isaiah are fulfilled. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has arrived to bless all people, and even Gentile fortune tellers from Iran in the East come to worship him. In Ephesians chapter 2 we read, This mystery is that through the gospel the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. 
This would have been a radical statement to the Jewish readers of Ephesians, but good news to the Gentile readers of Ephesians. You see, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel. Through the gospel, the good news about Jesus Christ, they will inherit the same blessings that were promised to Abraham. They will be blessed through Jesus Christ, the descendant of Abraham. Not only that, Paul says that Jews and Gentiles are now members of one body. And this was an important message to the Jewish Christians in Ephesus. Everything they had thought previously about those Gentile pigs changes with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not only that, but they are sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. In the New Living Translation, it says, And both enjoy the promise of blessing because they belong to Christ Jesus. And so what does all this mean for us? The good news that Jesus died on the cross is for everyone. No matter what race group, language group, cultural group, religious group, this good news is for everyone. Whether young or middle-aged or retired, this good news is for everyone. This is not a popular message for today's young people who believe that it would be rude to try and persuade someone else from another religion to become a follower of Jesus. And so I would like to suggest the following by, for relationships with people who are atheists or agnostics or from another faith. Firstly, make friends with people who don't believe the same as you. People who are Muslim or Hindu or Jews or even Jehovah's Witnesses because Jesus died on the cross for everyone. Treat them with respect. Don't treat them as if they're the Antichrist. Don't relate to them with a sense of superiority. Be willing to learn about what they believe and ask lots of questions. It's not about who wins the argument. Being argumentative is completely unhelpful. It's about genuine friendship and trust. It's about believing that we have good news and that Jesus Christ wants to bless everyone on this earth through us. You see, God has blessed, blessed you through Jesus Christ and his birth and his life and death and the resurrection. And so pass it on. Bless those around you. Don't keep the blessing for yourself. Go and be a blessing to everyone because all are welcome in the kingdom of Jesus. At this stage of the sermon, I'm going to be bold enough to ask you to give generously. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, we read, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And so there's a number of questions which arise from the scripture. Are you sowing sparingly or are you sowing generously? What have you decided in your heart to give? And thirdly, do you give reluctantly under compulsion or are you a cheerful giver? At St. Stephen's, we don't just want to cover salaries and the admin costs. We want to help those in need. We want to bring comfort to those who are mourning. We want to reach those who are searching. We want to support missionaries. And so I invite you to give generously and with a cheerful heart. If you phone the office and talk to Susan, we will provide you with our, with our bank details. Let us pray. Father, despite COVID-19 and the number of infections and the number of deaths and the number of mourning people, we still have much to be thankful for. We thank you for the brave leadership of President Cyril Ramaphosa. We thank you for the beauty of our country. We thank you that some of us were able to spend time with family over Christmas. Father, we were able to ce celebrate the beginning of a new year. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to serve and show your love to this congregation of St. Stephen's Presbyterian Church in Rosettenville. Father, we thank you for Reverend Vusim Kungu and for his faithful service as interim moderator. We thank you for the session of St. Stephen's and their leadership. We thank you for those who serve in this congregation in some way. But Father, we also pray for those in need. We pray for Glynis as she tries to finish her thesis, full with the power of your Holy Spirit. Father, we pray for every member of St. Stephen's who is not well. We pray for your grace. We pray for your healing, healing power. We pray for many families in our country and across the world who are grieving. Father, we pray for those who are hungry, naked, and poor in South Africa. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are part of the 32 congregations that make up the Presbytery of Igoli. We know that many have experienced the impact of COVID-19. We know that some live 
in shacks without running water and electricity. Oh, Father, there are so many to pray for. But once again, we remember that you are a powerful God who created the universe. You're a God who heals. You're a God who answers our prayers. Father, we need miracles in our country to correct the inequality that is, that is still a massive challenge in our land. May we be your hands and feet. May we be filled with love and compassion. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. It was wonderful to be with you this Sunday, the first uh, Sunday in, in, in 2021, the first Sunday in January. And I'm looking forward to being with you every week and worshipping with you and sharing God's word and God's truth with you. May God bless you this week. Amen.